Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Dr. D again. Um, today we're going to take it up a notch and talk about some uh, intermediate microeconomics. Um, no calculus required, I don't think. Uh, I've been trying to steer clear of, uh, of calc for my, my current class. We don't, at my school, we don't require business calc right now. So, um, in any case, it's still some pretty advanced uh, stuff for undergrads. Um, and uh, some people have been struggling with it, so I thought I'd... Uh, walk through a practice problem and see if we could uh, try to clear up some, some things. So here we go. Here's a practice problem we're going to work on. Steve's Beef and Bean Burritos is a small company that produces artisanal microwavable frozen beef and bean burritos using a combination of labor hours, L, uh, and capital services, K. Their production in burritos per hour is given by, pretty simple, uh, Cobb Douglas production function. Q as a function of L and K is equal to 3 LK. Um, if you know calculus, then you don't need this line, but the marginal product of labor um, is given by 3K, and we have their rent and their wage, the price of labor. Um, and then we have a lot of questions. It turns out with just, what is it, basically one, uh, two, three pieces of information, you can find a lot of stuff. Um, and a lot of this stuff you don't even need the, uh, you just use R and W for, but um, I know some people get a little skittish if we don't have numbers in here, so we'll stick with numbers for now. So, for part A, at present they have 10 units of capital. What is their short run total product of labor? If you remember in the short run, total product of labor is another name for output um, because capital is fixed. And so, uh, their short run product of labor, QSR, uh, is going to be um, a fun. We just plug in the, the, the fixed capital there. So, they have 10 units of capital. It's going to be 3 times L times 10, which is 30L. And so that's their um, short run uh, output, for, uh, total product of labor. Okay, so part B, they want to know what the short run marginal product of labor is. Um, again, you can do this with calculus, but if, if calculus is not your strong suit, um, then we can just plug it in the marginal product of labor function. Uh, we have the marginal product of labor function here. Let me pick another color. Um, MPL equals 3 times K. So marginal product of labor in the short run. It's going to be 3 times k, which is 3 times 10, or 30. And it's just this number as well. If you, you know, It's very simple calc if you take the derivative of output with respect to labor. Cool. Short run marginal product of labor, then, um, is 30. What's the average product of labor? The average product of labor, the APL in the short run. Well, the average product of labor is going to be the output quantity again in the short run now, per unit of labor, so divided by L. So here we have 30L divided by L equal to 30. And so we have a marginal product equal to our average product in the short run here for this particular um, set of functions. Um, and there we go. That That's our A through C, by the way. These are, and this, this is a little tricky sometimes for people who are just getting started, but these are all our production functions. And when we deal with production, generally... Uh, we have measures of product as functions of capital and labor, or in the short run, um, they're functions in the short run of labor. And so we're going to be playing with other variables for the rest of these. Um, we're going to be looking at costs, and these are going to be uh, functions of quantity, just so you know when to stop. Because we're going to do a lot of substituting in quantity output for labor, labor for output, because we have, uh, in particular, this relationship here. But once we have A, B, and C, all the rest of these are we're gonna have, we're gonna be dealing with um, functions of uh, of output. So there we go. So part D. What is their fixed cost? Um, well, fixed cost is equal to rent times capital, um, and it's fixed because at this point it doesn't matter how much we make. Capital is fixed in the short run. Our rent is fifty cents, and the number of units of capital is ten. And so our fixed cost equals, that should be times 10. And so 5 is our uh, fixed cost in the short run. Okay. Now as we produce more, uh, our fixed cost will stay the same. But our average fixed cost, our fixed cost per unit of output will change. Um, so for part E, what is their average fixed cost function? I'm going to move over here to try to start using up a little bit more space. Average fixed cost. Whenever you see an average cost, you're going to take that cost and just divide it by quantity. So fixed cost divided by quantity, um, which is going to be 5 divided by Q. Now, I know some people have an, in, have an 
an inclination to put it in terms of labor, but with cost, that's why I made this note here. We want cost in terms of quantity, meaning once we get a function that just has Q on the right-hand side, um, uh, then we're done. We don't want to keep marching along and doing more manipulations, right? Because uh, there's it's not, you know, we don't have a, a quantity yet. <laughs> um, that, so average fixed cost is a function of quantity. Um, we can actually write it that way if we want average fixed cost as a function of quantity equals 5 over Q. So that's uh, D and E done. What is the labor required to produce a given quantity? Um, well, we have a one-to-one -one relationship in the short run between uh, quantity produced and labor. Um, what we had here was Q in the short run as a function of L equals 30L. If that is the case, well, we can use algebra, right? So if Q equals 30L, we can use algebra to solve for L. Divide both sides by 30, and we get L as a function of Q equals Q over 30. And so now, um, whenever we want to know how much labor we're going to need, which we're going to want to know in a second, um, we just take the output we want and divide by 30. All right, now we're going to need that, like, literally right now. What is their variable cost function? Well, much like fixed cost was the cost of labor, the price of uh, capital times capital, our variable cost is going to be the price of labor, called the wage, times labor. Uh, set up here, the wage is $10. And so this is going to be 10 times L. But we want variable cost as a function of quantity. So variable cost as a function of quantity is going to be 10 times L as a function of Q. We'll plug in that function, 10 times Q over 30 equals uh, Q over 3. That's going to be our variable cost. So now we have our variable cost is Q over 3. What do we need now? For part H. Part H. So we're going right, right from the production function using prices and inputs and all that stuff all the way through variable cost and fixed cost. Now we can get total costs. H. Total cost is going to be, well, all the costs that do not change with the output, plus all the costs that do change with the output. And that way we can, if we want total cost as a function of quantity, we take fixed cost as a function of quantity. That's going to be 5 over Q, plus variable cost as a function of quantity, Q over 3. And that is our total cost. Oh, sorry. Undo, undo. I made a mistake. I put in the average fixed costs. Fixed costs don't change with quantity. That's why they're called fixed costs. It's just 5 plus Q over 3. Silly, easy mistake. All right. Be careful. Don't do that. Um, you should, when you do f total costs, you should always have uh, a term here that it should always look, in fact, like, um, yeah, like you have some intercept here, which is your fixed cost, right? When you produce nothing, the fixed cost is your cost. When, so when Q equals zero, you can see that the total cost is just going to be five. Good save, good save, right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll take it. All right. Let's see. Where are we going from here? That's our total cost. Our average variable cost. Average variable cost, part I. Much like average fixed cost was fixed cost divided by quantity, our average variable cost is going to be our variable costs divided by quantity. Uh which is, in terms of Q, Q over 3 divided by Q equals Q squared over 3. No, it's not. Why am I doing that? <laughs> Being silly. It cancels out. I apologize. Q over 3 divided by Q. These cancel out. One third. Constant variable average variable costs. When you have constant average production of labor, you're going to have constant average variable costs as well. Indeed. My goodness. Okay, average total cost, average total cost then. Here we go. J. Part J. Average total cost. That's going to be our average fixed cost plus our average variable costs. Average fixed cost now we have 5 over Q. And then our average variable costs are going to be 1 third. And so that is our average total cost. 5 over Q plus 1 third. Last but not least, 
when are they going to shut down? They are going to shut down whenever the price falls below the minimum AVC. Okay. So what is the minimum AVC in this case? Well, let's see. We have a constant average variable cost. AVC equals one third for all Q. And so if the price is less than one third, they'll shut down. Now, if this is a competitive market, um, when will that happen? Uh, we didn't have to find marginal cost. We won't deal with that in this case. We need a little bit of calculus. We could find marginal cost. Marginal cost is also going to be constant at one third. So, um, yeah, there you go. It's all. It's always going to be if the price is less than one third shut down. So there you go. That's how this firm makes its decision. Um, if their price is less than one third shut down, if not, then yeah, there you go. Make some stuff. So that's how we find all of these things. All we need again, just to refresh, is a production function, uh, rent, and wage. Um, and then if we don't want to use calculus, it helps to have the marginal product of labor. Uh, as well. Um, there you go. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I hope you're well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them and I'll answer when I can. Dr. D out.